Like ignition got a hit. Jesus Christ. We are tricycle! <laughs> I saw it, What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode here on Above Average. If you're new to the channel, my name is Trevor and uh, boy, do we have a good one for you today. In this episode, we will be taking a deep dive at the one, the only, Leon Dreisaitl's career thus far, asking questions like, how was this guy not a lock for the first overall pick back in the 2014 NHL draft? We'll be looking at the evolution of Leon Dreisaitl's game all the way from when he was, you know, just a little youngin back in uh, Cologne, Germany. What makes him so good, and at the end of the video, I'll be telling you who I think should be credited a lot more to Leon's success earlier on in his career, because I think I might be onto something. So guys, if you're new to the channel, please feel free to leave a like. This video has been one I've been working on for quite a while, kind of put it on the back burner, but um, yeah, I've spent a lot of time. So, you know, it, it would mean a lot, you know, liking these videos does go a long way. I mean, really it's the least you could do. I spent, you know, almost, oh, definitely over 10 hours, like close to 15 hours on this video with like writing the script, doing research, and then of course editing it. So if you could take one second, that's all I'm gonna ask. Just one second, just to leave a like and maybe subscribe. That would be awesome, but yeah, uh, we got a great one for you. But with that being said, let's get this thing going. And in order to get this video going, we've got to go back. And I mean, way back. The day, October 27th, 1995, in Cologne, Germany. Nothing crazy really about this day, except for the fact that little did we know, on this day, 26 years ago, the hockey world would be graced with a future superstar in the making, Sandra and Peter Dreisaitl welcomed a little boy into this world. That boy was Leon Dreisaitl! Oh, uh, you said it. That's just a world-class finish from a world-class finisher. Leon Dreisaitl was pretty well born into the hockey life. His father was no slouch in his own right when it came to hockey. Peter Dreisaitl was most notably known for representing his home country of Germany not once, not twice, but three times in the Winter Olympics back in the 80s and 90s. Peter Dreisaitl actually took the last shot in the first ever Olympic penalty shootout against Canadian goalie Sean Burke in the quarterfinals. And Peter was a great hockey player, averaging close to a point per game through his entire 19-year professional career. So, as you can see, Leon definitely had a great role model to look up to, who he would ultimately benefit his game from as he developed as a hockey player. But what Leon Dreisaitl was able to do in youth hockey growing up in Germany was nothing short of amazing. And let's just say there's a reason why they're calling him the German Gretzky. For starters, Leon Dreisaitl started playing U16 hockey at the age of 11. Leon Dreisaitl was 11 years old playing with kids three to four years older than him. And not only was he playing with these kids, he fit right in. As an 11 year old kid playing U16 hockey, Dreisaitl was able to put up a respectful 12 points in just 14 games. <laughs> I was never a point per game player in my youth years playing hockey and I played with kids my age. So that was, that's pretty skilled what he was able to do, honestly. So as a four year underager, Leon was already close to being a point per game player. And like all things, it only comes natural for players to have better offensive numbers as they continue to mature and develop with their age. In Leon's second season in U16 hockey, he did what was expected of him, putting up a very nice 43 points in just 30 games played. As you can see, as early as 12 years old, Leon was already lighting the lamp with kids older than him, you know, which is a lot easier said than done. It was clear from a very young age that he was special. The thing was just, how special? What Leon was able to do in his next two years was honestly laughable. Like, like honestly, we're talking, it's insane. Wait, just wait, hold your horses. I had to double take at some of these numbers because they were just some of the most impressive numbers I've ever seen. And I know what you're thinking, you know, this is minor hockey and you're right. But the point I'm getting at is he was clearly an exceptional talent for his age. In his second last season, his numbers skyrocketed. Leon Dreisaitl was able to put up an astounding 103 points in just 26 games, right? That's it. It's messed. What are you talking about? That's crazy. So that was it. He clearly peaked. Well, think again. 
What if I told you that in his final season in U16 hockey, Dreisaitl would almost double his point totals that he had the year prior? Because he almost did. That's right, my boy Leon popped off, not like he already didn't in his previous year, but Dreisaitl was able to put up 192 points in his final year in just 29 games. Averaging just under seven points a game. That is insane. Like I think maybe in a season I'd be good for you know if I'm chipping around seven points in the year. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I'm laughing, you know. He did that a game. Like that's insane. And in the playoffs that year, he put up just a casual, you know, just a casual 31 points in just five games. Like that is laughable. It's ridiculous, you know, what's he doing out there? I, that's insane. So obviously he was too good to continue playing in these leagues. He was miles above everyone. He continued playing in Germany for two years until it was time to take his talent elsewhere. The next step was an obvious one, but it's never easy moving as a teenager, especially overseas and into a whole new way of life. But that didn't stop him. Leon was selected second overall by the Prince Albert Raiders in the 2012-13 CHL import draft. Only Ivan Barbashev from the St. Louis Blues was selected ahead of Leon. And to be expected, Leon's numbers would obviously drop as he was playing against much harder competition. But as a first year player in the dub, Leon fit right in notching an impressive 58 points in just 64 games. Not only did he repeat those numbers, Dreisaitl's offensive numbers would take a significant increase in his second year with the Raiders, reaching 105 points that year, which was good enough for fourth place amongst all WHL players in league scoring, which was also his draft year that year. So, we're almost caught up. Leon Dreisaitl, proven scorer at every level he's played at. The question is, why wasn't he a lock for the first overall pick in 2014? The answer? Yeah, that's the answer right there. Aaron Ekblad was easily one of the most touted defensive prospects in my childhood upbringing. Solid defenseman, great offensive numbers. Unless we forget, he's a right shot defenseman, which is easily one of the most sought after traits you could have as a defenseman. He was physical compared to the likes of Shea Weber, was only one of five players at the time granted exceptional status to play as an underager in the OHL, so I could go on and on. Uh, not only was he the full package, but the biggest reason why I feel like he was a lock and why Leon was so overlooked was he was a Canadian playing in a Canadian market. Yes, in hindsight, it's so easy to look back and say, why the hell wasn't Leon taken first overall? Especially with all the hardware and numbers he's been able to put up. But despite all the numbers he put up overseas, that's just the thing, it was overseas. I kind of touched on this on the Kale McCarr video I did a few weeks back. If you haven't seen that video, I highly suggest you do. It was pretty sick. Like McCarr, Dreisaitl not only played in a lesser tier of hockey, but he played overseas. And I guarantee if he's putting up the numbers he did in Germany over here in Canada as an 11 year old, there would be so much hype on this player. Hockey is expanding and there will be a time where these players overseas start making headlines over here in North America. Not that I'm saying there hasn't been cases like this before, but I still think there is another level to go. Just look at the recent draft, for example. Uh, for the first time in NHL history, the first two picks were of Slovakian descent, making this the most successful first round in Slovak history. Shout out to you Slovaks, let's go. Now, as for his skill, Dreisaitl was touted as a very unique player by multiple scouts. Not only was he an efficient playmaking center, but he was also a, a huge, huge one. Huge one. In junior, it was evident that he used his size extremely well. Whether he used it for puck protection, which is something he still really excels at, or just forechecking physically and being physical in front of the net. I found in my research that although he may not have been the most physical player out there, he always used his size when it mattered most. Almost every scout knew his passing was his bread and butter, and that it would ultimately pave his way into the NHL. This is why he was compared to the likes of Jumbo Joe, Big old Joe Thornton, sup Joe? But what scouts didn't predict was how good his shot would end up being. Leon has easily become one of the most balanced players in all of hockey in quite some time. Not only is he one of, if not the best passer in the entire world, 
you could say the same thing for his goal scoring although he's probably not you know the best goal scorer in the league he's not he's like at least second or third so his puck protection is something that really doesn't excite you like a nice goal or a shifty deke might do but true hockey fans know how hard it must be to protect the puck from other NHL players. And Leon, he is one of the best at it. And one last thing I'd like to talk about is his offensive awareness and hockey IQ. Leon is easily one of the smartest players in the league. He can replays exceptionally well and he always knows where his teammates are at any given time while being on the ice. Part of the reason why he works so incredibly well with McDavid is because of his smarts and knowing what place to be on the ice and when to be there. And this goes for his passing as well. He's so smart with the puck and even if he knows he can't get the puck to his teammate because he might be covered by an opposing player, He'll put the puck to where his teammate is going, which just, you know, all comes from his smarts and it generates more chances than none. Like, it's insane. But with that being said, Leon didn't really come into the league as a gangbuster. His numbers right out of the gate were quite underwhelming. In his first year in the big leagues, Leon played a total of 37 games. And in those 37 games, he was able to register just nine points. This is obviously not what you want to see out of a top prospect, but Oilers management at the time was kind of doing their own thing. And he was eventually sent down to junior where he would play one season with the Kelowna Rockets. After that season, and after making a finals appearance in the Memorial Cup, where he would eventually win tournament MVP, although losing, but still got that MVP, which was kind of sick. Leon was motivated to redeem himself and that he did. That summer, he continued his training with one goal set in mind, that goal being to make the Oilers roster come puck drop in October. Despite a pretty respectable preseason, Dreisaitl was once again sent down, this time to the minors, the day before the season started. Even though he didn't make the final roster to start the season in the NHL that year, he only played six games for the Bakersfield Condors before they called him up. And little did he know that would be the last time he ever played for any other league rather than the NHL. We're almost done this video, there's just one last thing, or should I say one last person who I think should be credited a lot more to Leon's success in today's NHL. A lot of you guys might be thinking, you know, who could it be? Maybe maybe his dad, Peter, you know, maybe Taylor Hall, you know, the, the Taylor Hall, Teddy Purcell, Leon Dreisaitl line was kind of clutch that year. But in fact, the person who I think helped Leon's jump from junior to the NHL more than anyone, I wouldn't go as far as saying, you know, if he wasn't in the picture, Leon wouldn't be the star that he is today. But um, it definitely could be a lot different. And that person being Todd freaking McClellan. As you guys know, I'm a huge Oilers fan, been this way since I was a kid, and you know, since around 2015, I honestly have probably watched over 80% of pre-game and post-game interviews for the both the players and the coaches at the Edmonton Oilers Post here on their YouTube channel. And during Todd's tenure with the Oilers, you could honestly just tell from day one, Todd was a huge believer in Dry Settle's game. I really wanted to find the videos uh, for you guys, but I mean, this was over six years now, and that would be some pretty hard digging. But I was able to find this quote he said, I told him on the bench, be the best player on the ice. You don't have to be the second best player, be the best player, said Oilers head coach Todd McClellan. And of course, Dreisaitl responded with the game winning goal. You just hearing that ever since then, that's exactly what he's, you know, put on display. You could argue that sometimes he is the best player on the ice. I just remember like listening like game after game. Uh, Todd would just praise Leon's game and just saying he's gotten, you know, these players around the league are starting to know who you are, Leon. Like, I remember him saying that, like these other stars, you know, they know who Leon Dreisaitl is, you know, you're not, uh, you're, you're becoming a star in your own right. And, and don't be, don't be the second best player, be the best player on the ice. I swear he held on to that. And he, you know, as soon as he heard that, he held on to it and he's, he's kept believing in that. And uh, I, I love that, you know, honestly, I'd love to ask him that one day if I ever get the chance. Cause I swear that's that's one thing. I don't know if anyone's talking about that, but I've definitely I definitely noticed that. I was a huge advocate for McClellan and uh, his player development. And I honestly believe McClellan's impact on Leon was a game changer. You look how good of a coach Jay Woodcroft is nowadays. He's a huge believer and huge communicator to his players, which is why I loved him coaching in the minors. But who do you think he got that from, huh? Who? Of course, got it from Todd. Are you kidding me? Bingo, look at that, there he is. Look, although Leon didn't really come into the league as, you know, a full out gangbuster, I'm saying that a lot. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And strangely enough, like the aforementioned Joe Thornton, who he was compared to as a prospect, he also took some time developing. But once he was established, he put together 
a Hall of Fame career. Not everyone comes into the league looking like a bona fide star. Everyone is different, and Leon's story is special, just like the talent he is. And despite me doubting him every single year, he's always seemed to take his skill to another level. Leon Dreisaitl is an exceptional talent and will likely go down as the best German hockey player of all time. With that being said, this concludes my epi on the one they call the German Gretzky. Dreisaitl did an absolute rip job, and that's part of the reason why he's leading the NHL right now in goal scoring. This guy, we all knew he could pass in junior, not sure everybody saw him as this type of finisher. Yeah, so right on. Uh, that that's that's the video, guys. If you made it this far, honestly, I just want to say thank you. Please feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to this channel. If you want me to, you know, do a deep dive on someone, you know, another player. Uh, I have some players in mind, and uh, if this video gets some traction, this is definitely something I'll consider doing more for, you know, more players. I'd love to know your thoughts on Leon Dreisaitl. You know, is he your favorite player? If uh, anyone's from Germany, shout out to, you know, the Germans. I know I do have some views uh, coming from Germany, so that is pretty sweet. You guys have blessed me with one of my favorite hockey players um, in the NHL today. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much. The, the continued support has been awesome, guys. And, yeah, please, if we could get this video if we could blow this video up guys that would be so sick uh honestly the the bobby Orr, kale mccarr video i did is almost pushing twenty thousand views that is sick um if this could you know get around there maybe even more guys like that that would be sweet let's let's try and do it for sure and um yeah that's that's pretty well wraps up this video uh, i just want to say thank you and uh if you like this video obviously smash the like button um you know i couldn't be doing this without you guys so it, it means a lot that uh you guys, you know, have been doing what you're doing. And so keep it up. And uh, with that being said, I will see you in the next one. Take care easy, guys, and uh, peace.